How Iron Mike Tyson beat a dangerous criminal. Tyson, and you know it. You hit me, I'm gonna kill you. I'm gonna kill you. Traditionally, no robe, no socks. He says it makes him feel like a warrior, makes him feel like a gladiator. This story happened in the mid-80s when 19-year-old Mike destroyed everyone who came across in his way. And despite the damage that the young prodigy inflicted on his opponent, the boxers still wanted to fight him since they paid a good fee for the fight with young knockout artists. One of these people was Mitch Green, an American boxer who skillfully combined criminal activity with a professional boxing career. With a height of almost six foot five, Green had an impressive boxing record in heavyweight. Among his achievements are winning the prestigious Golden Gloves Tournament and duels with rivals such as Travis Barrick. With 16 wins, 10 of them by knockout, Green established himself as a force to be reckoned with. Meanwhile, Mike Tyson was climbing to the top of the boxing world. Prior to meeting Mitch Green, Tyson had already won worldwide acclaim for his dominant performances in the ring. His reputation outpaced him, and opponents feared his formidable strength and relentless aggression. On May 3, 1986, Tyson faced James Tillis. The fight, which ended without a knockout, signaled a change in perception of Tyson's invincibility. It was at this time that Green, with good skills and trash talk, began to insult Tyson, wanting to get a fight with a rising star. Green publicly mocked Tyson, calling him a paper champion and a phony. The brazen Green even taunted Tyson, saying, If you hit me, I'll finish you off. Those disrespectful words fueled Tyson's determination to teach him a lesson in the ring. And finally, on the night of 1986, the long-awaited duel between the two bad guys took place. The atmosphere heated up to the limit when the fighters entered the ring. Tyson exuded confidence, his eyes fixed on a brazen opponent. Spectators were looking forward to the clash between the Titans. The fight has begun. On HBO, that between Larry Holmes and Michael Spinks. Round one, Mike is to box. Pretty much do the same thing uh, a boxer should do to a punch. Joe free. Always aggressive, right in front of his man. Now we see some head movement. Green is off balance when he throws his punches. Well, the mistake that Miss Green makes is the fact that he doesn't coordinate his, his fist. He's slapping his punches. And uh, you have to make a guy like Mike Tyson respect you. Have to get those punches in and get him in shop. That's the uppercut that was um, that was working for Quick Tillers by Tyson. Well, let go say. And shots to the body. Slow down Tyson. your uh, maneuverability. Yeah. Tennessee to really uh, frustrate the fighter. Good left hand. As expected, the young phenomenon did not leave a single chance. The bandit arranged a total beating throughout the battle. Tyson, after the fight, admitted that he did not want to knock out Mitch Green since the process itself gave him immense pleasure. Up by left hook, and he did draw a warning from Luis Rivera, the referee. About holding Green's in trouble. No shots to the fighters doing it, taking his toe. Really working. A lot of body, a lot of leverage. The body shots. Watch for the left hook. There it is again, Barry. Powerful and more effective. The uppercut's working beautiful. Tyson had against Tillis. And what a shot. Hands high. He works his way in. That was a right hook. Close area to the body. You have to think, Ray, that maybe the Tillis fight woke him up. But there's no need for him to slow down. The momentum. Good left hook, solid left hook. Left hand, something that he did not do against Quick Tillis. Yo, 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 yo. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, man. Come on, come on. Hold it. And Mitch Green indicated that he was boxing. Another big left hook. Turn about going the distance, going 10 rounds. In fact, we talked to him about that. He's talking, Tyson's talking to Mitch now. Slip punches. Big right can be learned in talking to some of the people he fought. Look at the, look at here, look at here. Just right laughing at him. And Green 
seems to me, Ray, to be doing all the wrong things. Oh. That's very good. Another big left hook. He did pace himself, and what a right hand. There is such frustration. I mean, Tyson, they're good up with them. He has to take a stand eventually. Another couple body shots for Tyson. And now we see uh, Mitch Green. He landed with a good elbow cut there. Green just trying to tie Tyson up. And a couple of good shots by Mitch Green. His best rally of the fight right here. Look here. No. He's caught Tyson four or five times. And Tyson, for the first time, seems a little bit puzzled. Well, he's smiling. Tyson is smiling. But see, Green has those fast hands. Good body shot by Mitch Green. Now we're seeing a different Mitch Green. There was his right hand. This man will probably, he's holding behind the head, which he allows those shots like that to land. Here again. Oh, what a left hand. What's going to happen? Um, Another day in the classroom. Big left hand to end things. After this beating, the head of the gang decided to end his boxing career. But his ego could not forgive the fact of losing, and the bad guy decided to take revenge on his offender. But according to the rules that were closer to him, rules of streets. In the early morning of August 23, 1988, Mike and his friend arrived at one of the Harlem clothing stores, which is often visited by star customers to pick up a tailored jacket. Green heard from his acquaintances Tyson's location, and after a short time also drove up to this store. Seeing Mike, Mitch Green began to verbally hurt and abuse him in every possible way, demanding a rematch. And in just a couple of seconds, the old rivals began to fight. According to eyewitnesses, Green was the first to decide to strike, but Tyson immediately caught the bad guy with one of the right crosses, knocking him down. Then the iron ran into the car, but Green grabbed the door and did not want to let the offender go just then, and Tyson had already inflicted his killer combinations, as a result of which Green was lying on the ground unconscious. The iron in one of the interviews admitted that at that moment, he thought he killed him. But fortunately, everything worked out. As a result of the fight, Mitch's left eye completely swam. The bridge of the nose was broken, on which doctors subsequently put five stitches and a couple of ribs were damaged. And Mike, as a result of those blows with his bare fists, seriously damaged his brush. This injury cost an iron transfer for several months of the already appointed defense of the title of absolute world champion against Britain, Frank Bruno. But Green, almost a decade later, in 1997, decided to resume the prosecution of Mike already in court filing a civil lawsuit against him for bodily harm in the amount of $25 million. But the former bandit managed to sue only $45,000, which did not even cover the legal costs. But recently, after 35 years from a hot showdown in Harlem, an Iron Mike, one of the interviews, said that he regrets what happened. This shows us that even the toughest fighters can change for the better and admit their mistakes. At 215 and one quarter pounds, this young man is undefeated in 20 professional bouts with 19 knockouts. From Catskill, New York, ladies and gentlemen, here is Mike Tyson.